As far as Canadian County, it was the worst case scenario. I couldn't believe what I saw out there. I had to stop and think, is this really happening? Moving forward after that day, we didn't have the luxury of making bad decisions. I think that the schools, in a sense, is a heart. It's the heart of this community. You know, before I came to Canadian Valley, I had just graduated high school. Didn't really know, you know, what I wanted to do. I've been involved in career and technical education all of my adult life. I know who the students are, and I know that they need the services and the educational programs that we provide. Saw the automotive service program offered by Canadian Valley. They could come out here, they can be trained, and next week they've got a job. Once I got in it, found out that that's what I like to do, and they helped me find my career. I've never missed handing out diplomas. This is why I do what I do. And at least 85% of those people walking across that stage have already got a job. Some of them don't even show up for graduation because they're working. Career Tech provides so many workers statewide for lots of various occupations. I would say that we affect a lot of lives and also add to the community. Whenever I was leaving the school building that, that evening at 5.30, and I was thinking about the new chapter that might be happening for Canadian Valley Technology Center on Monday, June the 3rd, and little did I know that there was going to be a new chapter. It was just not exactly the same chapter that I was thinking about that evening. May 31st was a Friday, so I told my secretary I was going to run down to to El Reno to have lunch. There was a lot of SUV type vehicles, uh, hail damaged vehicles, radio antennas, you know, there's about a dozen of them out in the parking lot and strike up a conversation with these guys. They were storm chasers. So I was in the field that day, I was chasing. You know, I've chased storms for a long, long time. So I've seen about everything, or so I thought. I was teaching a night class and uh, we were the only people out there, my, my students, myself, and the night coordinator, Neil Blitzer. I had an uneasy feeling driving out there. You could kind of feel the, the conditions in the air. You know, there was something different and something big. I mean, it, it came down to the atmosphere was just a, you know, was a powder keg. As I was driving home, obviously could see the clouds. When I got back home, I immediately turned on the television and it was like something I really hadn't ever seen before. A thunderstorm is a, is a breathing, eating, it's alive. The whole sky was turning and it was turning over a, about a four mile area. At that point, I kept thinking, if it goes to the ground, nobody's gonna be safe. What I can tell you is the whole sky is sitting on the ground and it is just churning. There were three gentlemen from uh, the Weather Channel that were there that the conditions are perfect for a big tornado today and, and I asked them where and they said, well, here. The whole cloud base is almost on the ground. That whole thing is just circling like a top. Gary, it's right here in the middle. It, it's touching down yeah, again. It's, there it is. It's on the ground now. There it is, Gary, right in the middle of my shot. At first, I thought that the storms were going to go and miss the school. They were going to go south of the school. But then uh, I looked back again and saw that the storms were headed directly toward the school. The fact that that was moving southeast 2025 made a left turn, accelerated, to nearly 60 miles per hour. You've gone from uh, just over a half mile wide main tornado with small vortices underneath it. Now we've gone to over two and a half miles wide. Gary, it's moving southeast. It's moving southeast, Gary. They said it was coming down I-40, so I went out and opened the door and looked out across the parking lot, and lo and behold, I could see the tornado coming right at us. Boy, there it is, it's multiple vortices again. There it is, it's on the ground again. Multiple vortices, I can, three, I can see three funnels right now. So it looked like a merry-go-round. You have the center part, and then around it, you had seven other vortices. Those were moving at 150 mile per hour ground speed. Don't mess around. You know, t these are serious. These are serious, will hurt you or kill you potential storm. Gary, it's becoming a very, very big tornado by the El Reno Airport. 
we all got down below, you could look up and see the outside, and I could tell it was a storm like I'd never seen before or heard of. I could see th th stuff as big as cars flying through the air out outside, and it just literally sounded like everything was just total destruction. Chase storms for 25 years. No one had ever seen anything like it. It started raining like crazy. I mean, it was pouring down and there was water. When we come out of there, there was water running probably ankle deep inside the school. I was sending text messages to, to Neil and I finally get a text message back. And that text said that Everybody is okay, but the school has suffered damage. It was a huge floods, uh, 8, 10 inches of rain. You couldn't hardly get to this place from where I live. So I didn't get here until about two hours after the storm. I walked back toward the uh, classroom where I was teaching. I still didn't know what the devastation that there was until I, I was going to open the door and the walls was laying down. I was standing on the door. Really couldn't see a whole lot. It was dark and it was raining and power lines were down everywhere and you know you're walking in water halfway up your leg. No electricity at the school. I could see the school was damaged pretty bad. That was the next morning before I saw the full extent of it. lifetime on the fire department, I've seen some pretty bad stuff. But I don't think that any of us realized until we walked on this campus how bad this place was. You can't hardly describe it. It's a part of your life and a part of what you do, and when you see something like that, it's kind of overwhelming. Trees just completely gone or nothing left on there. Grass was sucked out of the ground. The big propeller blade had been lifted off the ground and stuck into the daycare center. That was quite a sight. The maintenance building was flattened. The other buildings from a distance may not look too damaged, but when you would walk through them, you'd see that walls are about to fall over. This tornado took, took out everything, and it, you know, the, the campus here just had to be in its path. Feel like something's stolen from you and you want to get it back. And I think that's where we were at. I think that's where we were at. It was just a building. You know, we only lost a building. No one was injured. It just felt like it was easier for me to relate to the human side, yet have an awareness that it really is just a building and we're going to be okay. Tech centers in Oklahoma are schools of choice. People choose to come and take part in, in our programs. This district had been running for 43 years. It, 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 it's been here a long time. All of our instructors come from industry. All of our instructors have made their living doing what they teach. If we had had the mothball programs, shut programs down, lay off great teachers, it, it would have been devastating. I spent 18 years in a machining industry before I started teaching. So we take the skill that we learned and we try to pass that on to the students to provide them with a skill that they can make a living with and make money and have a future. The two things that I knew that our folks were really concerned about was the fact about their job. The first few days after the tornado were, were obviously uncertain. You know, we all wondered what was going to happen. You know, that the, the school was destroyed. We, we didn't have a place to teach. And from a student perspective, you know, do I have school to go to? I was really worried, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I didn't know what was going to become of my program. And I was just like shocked and just wondering if what was going to happen with everything. Saturday morning when the TV camera started rolling and everybody wanted interviews and I made two statements. It was nobody loses their job and, and school starts August 15th. That set the bar pretty high. Basically what that meant is 
go get it done, figure out how to get it done. But we had some other areas of the operation, the business side of the operation, that I thought was critical. We needed to get the daycare center back up and running. We are a publicly licensed child development center, just like any other center, although we are housed in a school and used as a training lab for students who are enrolled in early care and education because the families that we serve are depending on care so that they can go to work every day. After the tornado hit, I went into immediate panic. Oh my gosh, I'm not gonna have school next year. And Dr. Winters had said, you have one week to get the daycare center up and running. One of those, this seems like an impossible task. How on earth are we going to make this happen? We had an emergency board meeting on Sunday. The cosmetology teacher at the time came in and she said, I know you're looking for a place to have daycare. And she said, I know the perfect place. And I said, oh, where? Church of Christ South on 10th Street in Yukon. And I said, oh, is that where you go to, to church? And she said, no. And I said, but you know somebody who does? No. I just drove by there, and I know that it's a good place for us to have daycare. It was the first place we went, and I went in, and it was dark on a Sunday afternoon. The youth minister, uh, Gene Newberry, was there. He said, can I help you? And I said, yes, you can. I'm um, from the school that blew away in the tornado on Friday, and we are looking for a place to have class. And he said, okay. Uh, immediately and I said oh gosh I need to explain to you what that means it's like no big deal we usually have a mission project they had just done a remodel project at the church they had not permitted it for daycare center or any of that kind of stuff I mean we had gone through five days of getting everything that we needed um, so that we could get it ready but we still didn't have occupancy I was at a firefighters convention in Tulsa so we were in a room talking and I got a call from a Dr. Winters and he said, I'm really in a bind. I said, George, we're having a heck of a time getting the fire inspection and I don't know what to do. I didn't know who else to call. We can't get this thing inspected for quite a while. And if we don't, we can't open up as soon as we need to. I said, well, how about talking to the boss? I said, she's standing right here and the fire marshal from Oklahoma City was there and I said, said, I need you to talk to Dr. Winters and just hand her the phone. Within the hour, we had a fire inspector from the city of Oklahoma City come out and allowed us to move stuff in the next day and over the weekend and start daycare Monday morning. And then I found out they were opening up at Church of Christ and I was like, yay, I still have a school to go to and this is gonna be change, but it's gonna be amazing and I'm gonna be learning. And as a future teacher, that was amazing because you see your teachers being flexible in a completely different environment than what they're used to. Dr. Winters tasked me with getting a hold of our school district, getting everything put together to have an emergency board meeting as quickly as possible. So we started, okay, we're gonna have school, we gotta have a place to have school. So we start tossing out different locations. Started kind of making those hard decisions. Okay, where are we gonna have school? How are we going to move all of those technical programs? And from that meeting, the John Holt auto dealership was proposed. By Monday morning, Dr. Winters, John Holt, the leadership team had a handshake agreement that we were going to move into that facility and have school. There was a lot of little things that had to be accomplished before we could have school there, but we got everybody on board that needed to be on board to help us accomplish that mission. Yeah, I was really surprised, you know, at how fast they were able to move everything over here. I was a little nervous on whether or not school would be back up and running, but it was impressive because they did it in such a short period of time and really took into consideration all that we were gonna need. I think we adapted real well you know, made do with what we, what we have. We all still got to learn what we needed to learn and got through exactly what we needed in order to pass those final tests at the end of the year. One year later, the bond issue to fund this project has already been passed and progress is being made. The skeleton of this building that you see behind me will stay as part of a brand new campus. I was actually in South Texas at a high school graduation for a family member when I saw Dr. Winters on CNN. Immediately, I'm on the phone with my staff saying, I can't be there, but I need you to be there Saturday morning. Dr. Winters and the administration and board at CV Tech were very forward thinking. About a year and a half prior to that event, uh, Dr. Winters asked us to do a master plan of their entire district from Chickasha to the Cowan campus to El Reno and we did that. 
and it helped immensely. Architects then had an awareness not only of who we were as people who fit into those spaces, but also what our spaces looked like before and what our vision was maybe for them moving forward. It was all hands on deck from the very beginning, from being here the next morning to being here the next few weeks and few months. They wanted to come up with a plan for, you know, a state-of-the-art facility, make a disaster turn into a great asset. This is probably the one and only time that we have the opportunity to, to redesign this campus since it was built. So it was important to get it right. The problem is, though, is when you have a building that had been in existence for 43 years, and when you go back after a devastating tornado like we had, and you've got to build the building back in 2015, 2016 building codes, uh, you're not grandfathered out anymore. The skeleton will stay as a total of $45.7 million is poured into the El Reno campus. It's really difficult to create a plan of a new facility when you've already got existing columns and an existing structure in place. Trying to fit a new 21st century learning environment that we were trying to create, so it was really difficult to fit all those parameters into that environment. And so I knew at the end of the day that we were looking at, you know, a 50 plus million dollar replacement of the facility with equipment, furniture, and all of those kinds of things. It necessitated the opportunity that, that we had to go out and vote a bond issue. We really didn't have any other alternative. First and foremost, we wanted to create a facility that when you walked in, there was that wow factor. The students will walk into an area with flexible learning environments that will just help get them excited about learning, get them excited about being here, and, and hopefully get excited about graduating. We're going to have the safest tech center in America when we get done, I can promise you that. Trying to incorporate safe rooms that had multi-purpose use. We incorporated a lot of flexible learning environments, smart boards, flexible furniture. So these areas are gonna be used for those other 364 days as learning environments for the kids. But with, you know, a couple closing of doors, now it's a safe room. And I think we're probably gonna have the top tech center in the United States when we, when we get done, just based on good, solid design development phases that we've gone through to make sure we encourage, we, we engage our staff. It seemed like they took our requests and done the best they could to accommodate them. They put together a plan that was just gorgeous. My classroom is going to be state of the art as a collaboration area for my students and so we can do some small group instruction as well as continue with the individualized and group instruction that I do also. And then the architects did a, did a good job, you know, designing it, making it look good, making it functional, and the flow of the students. A lot of input into it, a lot of thought. The students are at the center of what we do every single day. They care about the well-being of the students. They're not just a number, they're not just a student. That's someone that they actually care about, seeing do well in life. If you can figure out what's in the best interest of the students and do that, you can't go wrong. There were times when I'd drive home at night saying a little prayer that I hope that I can pull us off. I don't care how tough you are. I don't care how long you've been doing what you're doing. I don't care uh, how many decisions you've made, what you've done, where you've been, it doesn't matter. When you go through what we've been through, nothing that you could ever do prepares you for what we went through. Any challenge has been overcome by the team spirit, positive culture, positive mindset, we're gonna get through this, we're gonna make this work. That's the part of the story that to me is the most incredible, is how this family that we call Canadian Valley Technology Center stuck together. I really am proud to work for Canadian Valley and be a part of such a great team. It's, it's not about the facility necessarily, it's about the attitude and what do you bring to the table. How hard do you want to work? Do you want to persevere? Do you want to overcome? And that's the part that I'm most proud of. It gives us a sense of history, it gives us a sense of where we were, how we survived, where we're going in the future. CV Tech, 1970 from the beginning, 2013 through the storm, 2016 and into the future. We prepare people to succeed through quality career and technical education programs and services. 